understanding your position with the law. Because law and faith go hand in hand. Ready, quickly. Come here. This is the law, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for the law. Are we justified by the law? Yes. Yes, we are. Don't just by faith. By faith are we saved in Christ. We, we're saved by grace through faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We are, we are, the scripture says that by the law, we are justified by the law. The scripture also says that we, because we have faith, do we discontinue the law? Not for me. We what? Establish the law. We uphold the law. So this is the law. We don't want to do away with this. We want to argue. This here, folks, this is sin. This is sin. This is the what? The law. This is? Sin. This is? Law. This is? Sin. And sin, I'm sorry. Sin. Sin. Is transgression against the? Law. Sin. Is transgression against the? Law. The law is sin. No, no. So the law. So the law is when you do what? Or you sin, right? So sin is a transgression of what? Of the law. Now, what did grace come in at? Grace is always given for those who follow the law. It is not given for individuals who disobey the law, right. or those who do not recognize the law. <coughs> this is grace. Everybody say, out of grace. Hi, grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Oh, this is grace, right? Yeah. This is grace. So, this is? Sin. This is? Law. This is? Grace. And? Sin. Law. Grace. Sin. Law. Grace. So, we know that that that's his transgression against the law. Against what? Those who hate sin. oppose the law. Those who hate sin. oppose the law. And sin. his transgression against the law. Those who hate sin. oppose the law. Ah. Grace. Grace. Grace is pardon for those who sin. and break the law. Grace. It's pardon for sin for those who break the law. Who break the law. Now, this is important. Um, come here, Thomas. Oh, can you lay it in your mouth? Okay, come on. Come on. So, this is the Mashiach. Hallelujah. The Mashiach have come to give us grace for those who. Sin. Against the law. So the Mashiach gives us grace for those who sin and break the law. law. Okay, right? That's what Christ has come to do, right? That's what the Machia has come to do. However, let's continue. So we know that this is the Mashiach. What Mashiach do he, what message do he come to bring to Israel? Um, come on, Kim. <coughs> this is what we call the gospel or the basura. Or the basura, which is the good news of the kingdom. The who? Right. So who, who are you? Right. And who is this? And so this is the of the Mashiach. It is the good news of the Mashiach. And the Mashiach have come to bring to Israel. Right? He have come to bring good news to Israel. He have come, he have died on the tree for who? For the entire world? For who? Israel. 
Can other nations cleave to Israel and be saved? Yes. They can cleave to Israel and be saved. However, this is the of the what? Good news. Of who have come to give us grace for those who can break the law. Ah. So now we have the assembly. Last week we talked about the assembly. There is no church apart from the assembly of Israel. Every time the Bible mentions church, it's not talking about something independent, something autonomous, when you just oppose it with Israel. Israel is the, I don't want to say church, it's a pagan term. It is the assembly. Okay? Now, it's important. Come on, Mama. You take your notes, huh? So this is what? The assembly the Mashiach talked about. So whenever you see church in your Bible, it is a term ecclesia or ecclesia. The term church is a pagan term. The term church is not there in the beginning. In fact, that is a Roman construct. It is a term to bring paganism, just like Saturnalia as in, uh, was really the foundation for Christmas. And what they did is they sprinkled a little truth in it. It's the same way when it comes to these pagan terms like church. The etymological origin of the term church is an old German term, karke, or what we get karkar. In fact, you look up karke in Hebrew, it means a circle. It means circus. It means disc. It means those who worship the sun. Thus, we have people who worship on sun. It's not a coincidence, folks. It's not conspiratorial. A little research, you can shrewd in your scholarship. A little rigorous research, you will find that out. And so this is the what? The assembly. But in your, your King James Bible call it the what? Right? They call it the what? <laughs> the circus. All right, there's the assembly, right? It is the assembly. Come here, sir. Now we have what? We have the we have the amen. This is the preacher. All right? It's the preacher. Oftentimes they preach where? In the? So this is the? Who preaches the? Of the? Who have come to give us? Grace. For those who? Sin. And break the? Law. Break the law. So the law is done away with, right? There is no more law. So if you say there is no more law, very much have to see. <laughs> but we know that sin. his transgression against the law. So therefore, if there is no more law, then there is no more sin. The Apostle Paul said, if it had not been for the law, I would not have known what sin is. Come on. Sin is the barometer. Sin is my gauge to know. What is, I'm sorry, the law is my gauge and my barometer to know what sin is. So if there's no law, there is no sin. And if there's no sin, God don't need no grace. Yeah. This grace is only for those who sin and transgress against the law. And if you don't need grace, then you don't need a you don't need a savior. And if you don't need a savior, Certainly, you don't need his message. And if you don't, and the, and the good news is for who preaches the good news? Preacher, so you don't need a messenger. And if there's no messenger, you don't need to listen. Let's give an applause, everyone. So, the Lord. Replacement doctrine because there's something being replaced here. That's right. Substituted here. Yeah, so we talked about that last week. So it's called supersessionism. Supersessionism is another term, is replacement theology. It is the church's, um, their philosophy, their theology, their stance to say that they have somehow replaced Israel. 
but that is not true. Because everywhere you find the term church in the Brit Hadashah or the New Testament, it is the term ecclesia. It is the same term for assembly in the Tanakh or the Old Testament. In fact, in Acts chapter 2, you read Acts chapter 2, you read about Stephen. And Stephen talked about the assembly of Israel that was in the desert with Moses. So the scripture is saying that the assembly, the same word ecclesia, was in the desert with Moses. So the assembly, or what they call the church, was long before the Mashiach came on the scene. And the reason why, why don't they put church there? Because it's the same term. Because that means they would have to connect Moses. They would have to place Moses in the church. Come on. And they don't want to do that. Because if you place Moses in the church, that means you got to uphold the law, statutes, and commandments. So they intentionally didn't translate that term church when they did it every other place, but why not there? Because that means they have to honor Moses, and if you're going to honor Moses, you got to honor his laws and commandments and the statutes and the precepts of the Most High. There's another issue, too. Um, by saying that term, that's also a deity's name. That's right. Church is, is actually the goddess. That's right. Um, the other Christos or other Christ, Helios, his daughter's name is church. That's right. And so we're basically been trained to say that over and over. And there's even scripture that says we should not even utter out of our mouths the name of other deities. That's right. Wow. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Church is a, um, another deity. Like I, I folks, I love and appreciate um, our Christian brothers and sisters. Uh, in fact, we have come out of Christianity as well. But no matter how much you show them that Christmas is pagan and it has pagan roots, that's why the scripture says they love tradition more than they love the truth. We are in what the scripture calls a deep sleep, according to Isaiah chapter 5, verse 10. A deep sleep, or what 2 Thessalonians says, a strong delusion have come upon people. For people rather believe a lie than a truth. Tradition is what you believe before you hear. It is a stronghold. In fact, the Mashiach said, your tradition have made the word of none effect. It is ineffective because of your tradition. Your tradition neutralized. So no matter how much you try to tell people that your, this is pagan, has nothing to do with the Bible, people love tradition. People will kill you over tradition. They will fight you over tradition. Cognitive dissonance kick in. Cognitive dissonance is no matter how much you give them em emphatic, irrefutable, testable, definable, um, corroborating accounts and evidence to support your claim, and it goes against their theory, they still would dismiss it. They still would justify it. They still would come up with ways to somehow substantiate why they do what they do. That is, that, is, that is witchcraft, folks. That is a spell. When you have the truth in front of you and you still turn your way, your ear, or you the truth. So I, I put up a number of, on social media, a number of uh, theologians like Pat Robinson, uh, the 700 Club, you know, CNN, and all these other evangelicals who say, yeah, Christmas is, Christmas is pagan. We get it from South and India. The, the, the wreath is pagan. The Yule log is pagan. The wreath is pagan. It comes, because it's not a, it's other gods. You are acknowledging other gods. You mean don't even understand the intention of my heart. That's not until you have the truth. You're only accountable for what you know. Once you are exposed to the truth, no matter how egregious and difficult it is to go against the grain of that, you have a moral, a spiritual, and you have a biblical responsibility to do what is right. James 4 and 7, 17. For those who know to do and do not do, to him it is seen. My wife and I were watching we were on the home on a careful dollar channel. And first thing he was going on, he was talking about me. So I'm like, yeah, I'm good. And then he was like, you were talking about Christmas is pagan and all this. We're not doing it because it's pagan. We're doing it because we we just want to have a little fun. You know? Wow. You know, he was saying how when he grew up tree so when they got a tree it was just for them to have fun and then he says 
but you know, his audience is like you. So like he said, well, if I got to throw away my Christmas tree, we might as well cut all the trees out in the yard. This is what? Literally what, what he said. I wish I recorded it. Like, he, he's the same person that says uh, that that somehow um, that we don't have to follow any of the laws, even the Big Ten. <laughs> That's what he said. Even the Big Ten, we don't have to follow the laws. Because that is law. Because he's taking out of context. He's taking 2 Corinthians chapter 9 out of context. He's taking Romans chapter 6 verse 14 out of context. He's taking it out of context. And saying you don't see it because of sin. Um, he's he butchering. Because uh, in Romans chapter 7 it says, um, Paul says, uh, without the law, um, I would not know what sin is. So he says, see, with the law, that's how you know what sin is. So if I do away with the law, I don't know what sin is. Like fully taking it out of context and leading people astray. Yes. Yes. Huh? Who do you think keys to my car? Keys to my car? Yes. I'm sorry. That's a good question. That's a valid question, everybody. What did that have to do then? Thank you. Yes. Is that terminology used for replacement Supersessionism. Supersessionism. S U P E R C E S S I O N I S M. Supersessionism. Solemn assembly is on a Sunday. Hear the words that are coming out of my mouth. <laughs> yes. You are a by extension of Catholicism. Hallelujah. If you do communion every you know, um, first Sunday of the month, if you do it, some some churches do it every every Sunday. But if you do it with wafers and and, uh, and Jews and you are a by extension or a daughter of Catholicism. Right. So when you understand, so I, now I, I know I'm not talking conspiratorial stuff, folks. This is what I do, not only in terms of my vocation, but my occupation. I teach Church History 1, Church History 2, and seminary. So all of this tradition, folks, comes out of Roman Catholicism or the Western Catholicism, Western Church. And they get it from Rome. And so it has all trickled down, and now when you get to the Reformation period or the Renaissance period, you see all these reformers, like Sweeney, you see um, Bucer, you see Martin Luther, you see John Calvin, you see um, Erasmus, you see all of these theologians. They didn't want to part or to distinguish themselves from Catholicism. 
This is when you reform Catholicism. To say what you do in a Catholicism, this is wrong, that is wrong, that is wrong. Let's change it a little bit. So only thing we have to do, only thing we have in terms of mainline denominations is we have rehashed, re regurgitated Catholicism. Mm -hmm. It's the same practices. In fact, you read a book by George Barnum. Mm -hmm. He talks about the paganism yes. in the church. Yes. And he explains that all the root of what we do and how we worship stems yes. from Roman pagan, uh, paganism. Yes. To its core. But many of us say, well, you just know my heart. Mm -hmm. Folks, that's not the Bible. I wish it was just on my heart. But if it was just based on my heart, I'm going to be out there getting jiggy with it. I'm telling you. Because <laughs> it ain't based by my heart. It's by my actions. Because with your mouth, you say you love me, but your heart. It is written, we know, Father, spirit, not sinner. But if any man be a worshiper and do his will, him who heareth. Yeah, he hears. Now, what also the scripture says is in Proverbs 28 9, that anyone who abhors the law or do not, um, do not uh, observe the law, your prayers are an abomination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. The opposite of breaking the law is righteousness. Because righteousness is everything. Really, if we're in God's righteousness, sure. where we have his justice, we have everything. It's righteous, right? In fact, the scripture says it's the righteousness according to Genesis chapter 49. Righteousness is the scepter, which means that the scepter is your authority. You want somebody's authority? So our authority comes by righteousness. By righteousness. I was just going to touch on the fact that you brought up communion. Mm -hmm. And it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it talks about those that drink or do it unworthily. It's damnation and sin. So, like, the people in the church, regardless if they really are passing it, we still didn't even know who the real Hamashiach was in the first place. Mm -hmm. Like, they had the wrong understanding, and that would be considered right there. What is Shaul and what is or Paul, and what is when you read in Matthew chapter, uh, what, 20, 28? Uh, you read concerning where the famous uh, Eucharist, what we call the Eucharist, or the um, Lord's. Supper or mm -hmm. communion, what we call right. Eucharist. What is the Mashiach talking about? Do this and remember to me as often as you do. What is he talking about? Passover! Yeah. <laughs> it was during the Passover meal. But they called the Last Supper. It was Passover meal. <laughs> and that's why anybody who does it unworthily, they bring damnation upon themselves. If the context is not talking about in the scriptures, in the first century, they didn't have little wafer crackers and right. little things and pass it around to everybody. Right. And, you know, it's talking about, and that's the Eucharist, and really not, you are what we call substantiated sub or uh, transubstantiated. Yeah. That's two different things. One, transubstantiated means you believe that this is literal body and it's literal blood. And consubstantiated means it is a symbolic. So no matter what your school of thought is, the whole method is wrong. And that belongs to him. That's right. For purposes. That's right. It's, it is Passover. Because you do this, remember, you remember that he is the Passover lamb. That's right. Yep. That was slain. Yes. So, most of the time, the argument that I get when I say something about Christmas is that, well, we're just doing this in remem to remember him, to celebrate his birthday, to re in remembrance of him. But my thing is, that is not what he told us to do to remember him. He did not say go out and start doing some pagan customs. He gave us the Passover. Now, number, number one, birthdays was a foreign thing to Hebrew. Number one. Mm -hmm. Put that out there. Now leave that alone. Number two. Say foreign. Foreign. That's right. Number two, we know most definitely when the Mashiach was born. For those who follow me on social media, uh, I preach seven days a week. Not just here on Shabbat. So you get you get seven different messages every week, right? So we know that he was born during Sukkot. We know that for sure. That's why they are appointed times. That's why we will know the times and know what we should do. In fact, we know when he's coming back. Hey, what you talking about, Willis? No man know the day nor the hour when when the Son of Man shall return. Do we know the day? Do we know the time in which he's coming back? 
Yeah. Know the peace but do we know the day and hour? No. But we do know the time. Yes. We know that for sure. In fact, there is, when you understand uh, Yahudim language, there is a feast that we celebrate that is given a name called Yom Teruah. You know what Yom Teruah means? Not just the feast of the trumpets. And we know that because Thessalonians said there should be the sound of the trump of God shall blow. Right? And the dead in Christ will rise first. So we know the coronations, Psalms Division 2, um, in 2 Chronicles, 1 Kings, it all is talking about the coronation of a king. There's always a trumpet being blown. All throughout when the dead and right, even in the Tanakh, there's always a trumpet blown. It's Yom Yom Teruah. Guess what Yom Teruah is also called as the Bible word? It's the feast in which no man knows the day or the hour. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's what it's called. Mm -hmm. So when you read it in the original Hebrew language, we know what season he's coming back. Why is that consistent? When did he die? You're what peace? Passover. When was he buried? Feast of the 11. When, when, when did the resurrection take place? We know that for sure. Because Paul called him, he called, he equates the first fruit to the resurrection of Christ. Right? And then we know Shavuot, right? Which, which in the Greek language, Pentecost. But Shavuot, and we see that in the scriptures in Acts chapter 20 as well. And, and then, of course, we know when he's going to return. So we are experiencing death, his burial, his resurrection, as well as the, the Ezekiel 36 manifestation of the scriptures that he will now put the, his spirit where? In us. And that's prophecy being fulfilled in Acts chapter 2, where now the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in us. And the law now will write the law upon the tablets of our hearts. That's what Shavuot is about. So we have that experience. The next thing... Notice there's a long way over between counting the Omer to Shavuot into what we call Yom Teruah. And so Yom Teruah, that's when he's going to die. Do we know the day and the hour? No. But do we know a season? Yes. yes. Of course we do. Because that means all the rest of them have to be null and void. Now, do we We also know then after that is, is Yom, Yom means day. Then, of course, it's Yom Kippur, Atonement, and then we have what? Sukkot. So we know for sure when the Mashiach was born. It was during Sukkot. In fact, you should pay attention to language. And it should be called Emmanuel, which means that's what Sukkot is called. The Feast of the Dwellings or Feast of Tabernacle. He's going to now tabernacle with you now and forevermore. We also know that because because um, we know doing um, uh, Abijah and we know that um, uh, John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, was a priest. Mm -hmm. And during a time when they offered certain sacrifices and all that, you can go through the scriptures and see it. And so we know for sure, according to historical accounts in the Bible, that John the Baptist was born in like May or June. Mm -hmm. For sure, we know that. Mm -hmm. And we know that the Mashiach was born about five to six months after him. Remember, Elizabeth was pregnant first, and then a Mashiach. So we know during the fall, is when he was born. So number one, he was born, folks. So number one, birthdays were not recognized. Number two, we know that that's not his original birthday. That's like celebrating your birthday was in September, celebrating it in January. It's not. Number three, why would the Most High, who is a jealous Elohim, why would he share a birthday if he celebrated? Why would he share it with Tammuz? <laughs> Why would he share with somebody else? I have heard Christians say, see, but no, we can come in and just take over. When have y'all given us the power to reclassify evils? Or reclassify, say, you know what? I know that's evil, but 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 on Halloween, we just gonna call it Hallelujah Night. Yeah. We just gonna call it this. When we have given the power to take something that is demonic and reclassify it, we have a tendency of Christianizing things. To justify our indulgences. So in the book of Daniel, it declares that the enemy changed from days and time. Daniel chapter right. 7, verse 25. And so New Year's is another one. That's right. It's the big one. Feast of Janus. Wait a minute. This is the last time I'm going to see you all before the pagan New Year. Right. Janus. So that's why we don't, we don't have that, folks. We don't. We stopped doing that. Now, we used to do a beat. We used to have, give out hundreds of awards to our members. End of the year. And. 
the best this, best that, and we stop doing that because we know when is our new year, according to the scripture. March, March, March April. Exodus chapter 12, verse 2. The 14th day of Abib. New year is when? In the spring. Right. That was the day Israel was delivered. They're delivered, that's right. They don't want us to make that connection. They don't, they don't want us to make that connection. So they change the time, right. the point in time, they get us confused. Right. Right. So that we can defy the Most High and they wear out the saints of the Most High, yeah. according to the scriptures, the appointed time. Let me prove it to you really quickly. I don't know how y'all got me on this. So <laughs> the Latin word for seven is what? Seven. Latin word. S-E-P-T. Set. The Latin word for eight is what? Octagon. Octopus. Octagon, right? Is eight. The Latin word for nine is what? No. And you all know because you said you passed math or not. The deck, right? So the Latin word for ten is deck or deca, right? So we know that. So wait a minute. So is September the Ninth month or seventh month? Seven. Is October the tenth month or is it really the eighth month? You see, it's even in the language itself. No, of course, is nine. So November cannot be the eleventh month. It's the ninth month. December cannot be the tenth month. I mean, the twelfth month is the tenth month. In length. So if you go all the way back, you find that March, April is the first year. It's embedded in there. And the most high established. His calendar, his system. It's not until pagans came along and they changed it from various calendars, whether we're talking about um, the uh, Janus, um, whether we're talking about the Bulgarian calendar, um, other calendars that came along, and it is to, the purpose is to throw you off of the system of the Most High. Like we have, like we can arbitrarily and unilaterally change the times of y'all, because we're smarter than y'all, right? Y'all, you don't know what you're doing. Go sit down somewhere. That stuff is archaic. It's antiquated. What you're talking about has been dismissed. We make up our own rules and our own regulations. If y'all be y'all, then serve him. But if they all be y'all, then you serve them. Somebody have to hand up before that. That even goes to, uh, to the, the, um, the days of the week. That's right. And the time of day, anti meridian and post meridian, all right. that. It, it's a breakdown of that. That's it's right. It's not just the months. That's right. Yeah. Well, if, when, when you say month, I mean, you get the term moon from that. But when you say month, folks, every time you call on a month, you're calling on a God. That's it. So paganism is all around. Like I get my kids saying, now everything's pagan when you bring it to me. Everything's pagan. The door's pagan. My house is pagan. My back is pagan. Didn't God accept the knowledge of the Babylonian calendar? So, he worked, so Yod uses the framework um, in which we're thrust in in order to transform us. Mm -hmm. So, Yod would use system like here in America. He will use certain times to do it. That don't mean he honors the time in his perfect will, but he uses the construct of humanity in order to get his message across to us. So yes, we see that. Now, um, we see a lot of things in terms of the boundary of the system. So when people use the scripture, um, he knows the thought, he speaks towards you, they are thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a great I'm like, you're my Prophesy, I'm prophesy to you, high shoulder of our hey, God. He knows the thoughts yeah. that think towards you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. Get ready, he's about to thrust you to new levels. I it's sense the anointing coming over. I Ooh. sense the power that now you're about to turn. Your, your, your better days are yet ahead of you. You are better than your past. He's about to thrust you. <laughs>
before the this institutionalized church, um, they weren't doing that. It wasn't until Hebrews came into it. So that's West African culture and tradition. So culture is exhortable worship. So I don't want us to dismiss it. So I don't mind them hooping and howling and thrusting it because it's exhortation. But is it substance in what you're saying? Are you, are, are you exhorting us in the philosophy or are you exhorting us when it comes to the scripture? So don't get me wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But y'all feel weird about that. Some y'all like, go ahead and preach. Some y'all like, come on, give that thing. All right. So um, I went to return the question, what the question was. But um, I forget. What were you talking about? Huh? Okay, we're going to. Scripture. We'll show it. It's the scripture. We follow the scriptures. The scripture is our roadmap. It is our guide. It is our navigation into new journey. So you would hear us during the first of the year. Passover, folks. That's right. 14th of B is our new year. The new year is not in the day of the winter. But the new year is when everything is coming to life. Right. It's March and April. For America, it depends on the B. So this year is an April 9th. April 9th of this year. We find that is the first of the year. I'll be uh, you, and then I come back to you. Why are you gonna let me teach? You've been engaging in so-called planning. Y'all haven't spoke of planning. He spoke of stars. The moon, the sun, and the planets are planning. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
so after you, I think it was you, and then you, and then we have to try to get out. Okay. Um, somebody else. Thank you. Um, I just want to say how how far all of us have come. You know, to believing that we live on a giant ball <laughs> in a giant mass of outer space. Right, right. And now we're here. You know, it's just you gotta praise the most high for that. You have to. You have, you have to. to praise no, the most high for that. You can't. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because we see through a glass what? Mm. Darkly. And what is it talking about? It's talking about the molten glass that's above us. Scripture talks about the molten glass. There's a molten glass above us. In fact, permanent. That's right. And that's how the great deluge happened. Or, I'm sorry, you all call it, you all call it the great flood, the flood of Noah. But there, because Scripture talks about the window of heaven. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let, right? Let it rain. Well, it wouldn't rain, folks. That was a pouring. That yeah. was a drenching. Yeah. So I, I love my children. My, my ch children and I first came to this truth and understanding <laughs> of the Hebrew cosmology. I began to show them that you see the blue up above us? That's water above us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it takes some going through scripture. I, I never try to like, I don't like to um, use the spiritual, conspiratorial um, rhetoric. I like to show you in scripture. Mm -hmm. right? Because let every man be a lie for Yah be true. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay? So you don't need my words. You need to hear the scriptures. Right? Line upon line, precept upon precept, here and there. All right? Can, can we get to something now? <laughs> All right. All right. We don't got that much time, so I'm going I'm to uh, teach in tongues. All right. <laughs>